glycemic index, and glycemic load. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba nitong dalawang ito? Magagamit mo ba ito sa pagkontrol ng diabetes? Ready na kayo? Let's start! Good day again guys, this is Dr. Ivan Kudal, your internist and your endocrinologist. Here in this page and in this channel, we try to educate people regarding diabetes, thyroid, and other hormonal diseases. Again guys, dun sa mga nagtatanong sa diet and diabetes, meron po tayong tips regarding that. Ilalagay ko na lang yung link sa taas or dun sa description down below. But in general, ano ba yung gusto natin kinakain kapag ikaw ay diabetic or non-diabetic? Try to eat whole foods. Siyempre, walang processed. Avoid refined carbs. Watch out for calories. And do the diet regimen na nag-work po sa inyo. Kahit keto diet pa yan, IF, paleo, mediterranean, or vegan diet. Ang ibig sabihin kung ano yung mas feel mo, ano yung mas kaya mong i-maintain, yun ang dapat mong gawin. Now, with regards to that diabetic diet, ano nga ba itong glycemic index and glycemic load? The GI or GL is a tool para malaman mo kung tama na ba yung kinakain mo kapag ikaw ay diabetic. Pwede ba ito sa'yo? Or dapat mong iwasan? Allow me guys to explain. Glycemic index is a value to measure how much specific foods tend to increase your blood sugars. O ba? Diba, ito yung paraan para malaman mo kung ikaw ay diabetic, pwede mo ba tang kainin o hindi. These foods are classified as follows. Low kapag 55 and below ang value, medium 56 to 69, and high 70 and above. Foods rich in carbohydrates or sugars tend to have higher glycemic index values. While foods rich in protein, fats, or fiber, syempre, mas mababa yung GI values nila. And foods that contains no carbs, no GI value is also assigned to them. Ano tong mga to? Meat, poultry, fish, nuts, seeds, oils, and herbs. Kapag kumain po kayo ng carbohydrate-rich foods, for example, yung cake, syempre, mataas po yung glycemic index value po niyan. Tataas din po ang inyong blood sugar. Ang tanong, gaano kataas? Siyempre, titignan din natin yung amount of food that you have eaten. This is where glycemic load comes into place. Glycemic load measures how much your blood sugar will go up taking into account the glycemic index value and the amount of food that you have eaten. Okay, paano naman yung classifications ng GL? Parang katulad rin po ng GI, low kapag 10 and below, medium kapag 11 to 19 and high pag 20 or more. Ibig sabihin guys, sweets are not created equal. For example, a cake has a high glycemic index and a high glycemic load. Fruits for that matter has high glycemic index also, but low glycemic load. Ibig sabihin, ang kalahating slice lang ng cake, pwede niyang mapataas ang blood sugars mo katumbas ng 4 pieces of apple. Kaya nga some of the doctors advise whole foods Kasi dun sa effect na to, ikaw ba kaya mong kumain ng apat naman sana sa isang upuan? Di ba mahirap pong gawin yun? Eating whole foods tends to decrease the amount of servings you have eaten. And syempre, mas onte mas less din yung calories na nakukuha mo. So, Dok, kailangan kong alamin yung mga gantong bagay sa kinakain ko. If you are a diabetic, yes. Especially those who are type 2 and type 1 diabetes. Kasi very sensitive po yung katawan nila dun sa mismo kinakain nila. It's because they have little or no insulin in their body already. You do not need to memorize these things guys. Ang importante lang, medyo familiar kayo sa mga terms na to para ma-distinguish nyo kung yung kinakain nyo nga ay eh mataas yung glycemic index or glycemic load nila. The higher the carbs, the higher the glycemic index. For example, yung rice, pasta, bread, potatoes, corn. The more processed foods naman, the higher the glycemic load. Kapag rice, rice krispies. Yung pasta, yung instant noodles or instant pasta. Meron nga bang ganun? Sa bread, gawin mong pastries. Sa potatoes, gawin mong potato chips. And dun sa corn, gawin mong corn syrup. Nagigets nyo ba yung ibig kong sabihin? Carbohydrate rich ka na, prinases mo pa yung carbohydrates na yun, refined carbohydrates, ayun. Double whammy, mataas ang glycemic index, mataas din po yung glycemic load. By using this knowledge, malalaman mo po talaga ano yung bawal sa'yo or kailangan mo mawasan na pagkain and ano yung dapat mo talaga kinakain. Again, may mga pagkain na walang glycemic index and glycemic load na naka-assign po sa kanila. Ano tong mga ito? Meat, poultry, 
fish, chicken, nuts, seeds, and herbs. Hindi naman necessarily kainin mo lahat ng mga to or yun lang ang kinakain mo. But syempre, try to limit your refined carbohydrates as much as possible. By using this GI and GL in your diet, studies have shown na may mga benefits po siya. Ano itong mga to? Number one, improve your cholesterol levels. Okay, tamo, hindi lang pala sa fats na kukontrol ng cholesterol but also the sugar intake. Number two, losing weight. Again, hindi lang fat ang problem with regards to weight. Also, the carbohydrate intake. Number three, risk of certain cancers like endometrial, breast, or colorectal cancers mas mababa. And number four, risk for cardiovascular disease. Kasi dun sa mga studies, the more sugar intake or carbohydrate that you have, the higher your chance of CV disease like stroke, heart attack, PADs. Mas mumababa kapag mababa rin po ang intake nyo ng mga to. In short guys, hindi lang po sa diabetes nagbe-benefit ang simple knowledge na to. Kaya kung ako sa inyo guys, try to incorporate these food choices as well. O ayun, hopefully guys, you learned something new to this video. If you have questions and concerns, please comment na lang po sa baba. And if sa tingin nyo may natutunan kayo, please like and share if you're on Facebook and subscribe and smash up button kapag nasa YouTube po kayo. Thank you always guys for your support. I think that's it. Thank you for watching and listening guys. This has been Dr. Ivan Kudal, your internist and your endocrinologist. Signing out.